Howdy knuckers. <laughs> Yay. I don't know if we did enough of that. I guess I can do that too. With my non-alcoholic beers. Ooh, you're drinking Preds. You bought this for me. Oh, it's the, I thought that was the can. Wow, it shows how stupid I am. Oh, no. No, it's the beer cozy. Okay, okay. Anyways, yeah. yeah. We're back. Another quarantine special. Because that just seems to be the way the world is going yeah. nowadays. And uh, hey, man. Yeah, you know that uh, you have to be talking if you're going to be pointing to that so it picks it up. I, that was just for you. I know, but you should you should do it for everybody now so you can get this out of the way. I didn't want to. No, I didn't want the world to see that I was slapping my tit. What's on your tit, Brad? Anyway, I'm pointing at my Peace Country Equipment T-shirt because I got geared up right. Exactly. Well done. Well done, sir. <laughs> Uh, hey, 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 hey. yeah, uh, just apologizing to everybody listening. We're having some audio issues already. Like I'm getting clicks and pops and we got a bit of a delay here. So you might have to just bear with us on this one. Can you still hear the click? You're frozen in time. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I was just trying to see how long the delay was. <laughs> uh, talking about apologize. <coughs> talking about apologizing. Uh, you should probably delete those tweet uh, texts I sent you. Yeah, How you're, how you're because you're a... Uh, you're, uh, uh, Nazi, you don't like the Jews. No, no, I mean like all of them so that you don't get your text hacked and posted online because uh, I can't afford to do that. Yeah, exactly. So I think what you're referring to is the big hot topic <laughs> in the NHL world. And like, talk about a terrible time for this to happen. Like, it, if it happens during the season, there's a chance this gets swept underneath the rug. However, because um, because of the uh, quarantine and nothing else being newsworthy, we're pretty lucky that uh, Brendan Leipzig seems to be kind of a piece of shit. <laughs> kind of. Ah, uh, well, 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 do you think that he's a he's a bad guy? No. I'm just saying his remarks, I guess, is what he said makes him seem like a piece of shit. Yeah. Uh, Which is what you said. So I guess I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll get into that right now. Obviously, if you, if you are dying for hockey content, I guess, this is a story that's come out. And, uh, like, the chat is pretty much like, and I'm not defending what he said. I'm going to make that very clear. No, uh, and I already know. I already know where you're going with this. Yeah. Just but, by saying I'm not defending him. Yeah. yeah. But the big thing here is guys have conversations like this. It doesn't mean that's how we are. Totally. Okay. And to be fair, like what? I think the thing that was the most disgusting, like saying how we wanted to degrade women. And to be honest, though, in a, in a weird setting, that can kind of be a kink. There's a lot of degrading porn right. out there. I don't know. Somebody told me about it. Never seen it. Not my thing. In fact, that stuff like if I see mascara running and gagging, I'm not a fan. It turns me off and turns my boner inside out and I can't finish the job. So, but, but there are people out there that like it. Like, like my friend Brad here. He's a heavy metal guy and oh, he, he loves degrading women. <laughs> and he wasn't doing it in his normal life because he's a good person. So he's got to get his rocks off some other way. So he's going to be having a good time spanking his crank while watching some chicks pretty much die on a dong. Is that fair to say, Brad? <laughs> no, that's not fair to say at all. You can, you can go get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> but he did say those things in a vote of confidence. 
well, I, I mean, yeah, it was a private conversation. There should be no confidence needed. The messages were apparently hacked. Yeah, and that's another part of this story that uh, we'll, we'll probably have to get into because, like, that's just a dirtbag move. Uh, whoever hacked, like, it, it's like it's none of your business. Right. If he would have said that stuff, like during okay, a time. during a, a Chicklets interview, it's a different story because he's putting it out there, right? And like what you say to your buddies in, in between times shouldn't matter. No, that's right. And I mean, that's what I'm getting at by saying that he said it in confidence, but you know, he still said it. It's Yeah, no, exactly. And, and and I hear that. So it's unfortunate it got leaked. And then, like, the, the fallout of it is all bad. Like, and here's the thing. I'm not I, – I don't condone this at all. This is terrible shit. It's terrible. Uh, I don't like – I don't like – I don't like guys like that that have to say something like – that that talk about women that way. It's different. Like, like guys might be like, yeah, look at this slam piece here. And, oh, rail this chick last night. That's a little bit different. That's just guy talk. Right. I actually think the most, well, it wasn't the most insulting part, but what stood out to me the most is how he was bitching about uh, Garnet Hathaway and uh, who's the other guy? They have a podcast and he hasn't been invited on yet or something called them Losers. He's like, those fucking losers. <laughs> I'm like, hey, that's me. Yeah, I didn't really understand the context of that. Um, I guess like a lot of people are saying that you can't really say that about teammates and how do you go back into the room like that? But do we like, is that really all he said about that? Like those guys were losers or was he actually kind of being like, these guys suck. Like I don't get along with them. Right. Yeah. Is it a joke or is he serious? Right. Well, considering he's been on five different teams in the last two years, it's, you can kind of chalk that up to maybe, a bad, bad apple in the room, right? And in tight dressing rooms right. like Washington, you, you don't want to deal with that. And you're going to obviously take matters into your hands to get out from under that. And that's what Washington uh, did, right? Oh, for sure. And I don't know. If the, if the season's still being played, those texts probably don't even happen. Well, maybe. Right? They're... I don't know, man. I they'd be in the playoffs, so they might, you know, there might be team rules, no texting on game days or whatever. Like, there's so many variables that could have changed the outcome, right? But is it a blessing in disguise for the Capitals? You know, maybe they were already having issues, and this was the, you know, the final straw. Who knows? Yeah, and uh, just about uh, one of the the liner notes you put in here on the situation is like, have it, has has his contract been terminated like that? And for me, like before we get to even that point, it has another one ever come to that. Cause I think I have one example I can think of, but how, how are you able to get out of, out of contract from that? There must be an ethics code or something in a contract. Oh, there's definitely, there's an ethics code for sure. Because that ha- that's what happened with Bill Peters, right? That's why it took so long for Calgary to fire Bill Peters because the ethics code states that if something happens with the team, he's currently coaching. Mm-hmm. not a prior team. So that's where the legalities came in and they weren't sure if they could fire him or if not. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, okay. So that solves that problem there or solves that question that I had. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to uh, get into about it is, um, and of course, as soon as I started talking about it, uh, it fell out of my head what I was going to say. <laughs> I felt, I see it. it's on the counter in front of you there. Yeah, it's dribbling away and I can't get it. It's slippery little bastard. Well, um, what I was getting at with that is, has the team ever formally, formally said, hey, we're terminating this guy's contract due to a violation in the, co- in the contract that they have? There's been tons of players that have obviously been a cancer in the dress room that have had their contracts terminated, but we've never really heard what happened besides hearsay from, say, players or reporters, but never from the team, right? So yeah. Washington was kind of left in a situation where everyone knows about what happened before they may even have known, and now they got to deal with it. 
Yeah, so this thing comes out. He has to do the apology tour. They place him on unconditional waivers, obviously ethics code. So it, it happens fast. And and uh, the only other example I can think of uh, is probably Slava Voinov. Uh, right, but that was – but I don't even know if that was really a termination. More like they like had to ship him out to the KHL, or was it a full termination? But the league kind of banned him from playing, though, right? Mm-hmm. Well, and the ban was recently lifted too. Right, but I'm just saying right now. When he left, the league banned him. You know, the league has a ban. Leipzig, the the Capitals have just ended his contract. Yeah. Yeah. So technically, he couldn't play on another team, right? Yeah, exactly. But what are the chances anybody's going to pick him up after this? Zero to slim. Uh, Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't pick him up. Yeah, he's going to go play for Bill Peters probably in the KHL. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) Hey, I don't like black guys. You don't like women. We're going to get along. Viva (laughs) Revolution. We're Mother Russia. We're all that. Yeah, but they all go to Russia because you're allowed to have that kind of behavior. They don't give a shit. Yeah, like Slava Voinov. Oh, you beat your wife? I beat my wife too. Come play in Russia. <laughs> uh, oh, I remember. But other than that, we really ha- we they really haven't said anything else. So, like they haven't released any other information. You know, uh, there was just the the leaked text messages between the two players. Uh, and from what I gather. Uh, the guy he was texting actually hasn't had his contract terminated. Uh, I can't Jack, remember his name. He's only played like 10 NHL games. Yeah, Jack Rodewald or something. Right, right. He yes. plays in the Florida Rodewald. Panthers organization. And, um, yeah, uh, his brother was on that chat too. And, right. and He's in he university. was – Yeah, he was kicked, out of his, uh, kicked off his university team, which I find also – you know, a little strange that way. Uh, but I do remember what I was going to say when it fell out of my head. I caught the slippery bastard. I got it right here. Um, a cool point was brought up on Twitter about this. It said, okay, sure, this is Brendan Leipzig, who at best, like, has he ever been more than a fourth-line guy? He was a great scorer in, in junior and, in, and in, uh, in the AHL, but he never put it together in NHL, right? So this is a guy that has this happen, and they can just terminate him. Nobody worries. Is this a different story if – and this is not – I'm not going to pick a guy's name. Let's say it's Nick Backstrom, who we obviously know is a good guy and a uh, consummate professional. But if this is Nick Backstrom, do they do the same thing? Probably not. No. Fuck no. Look at uh, Kuznetsov, who got caught doing cocaine, which yeah. is just as against the ethics as, you know, degrading women or being racist. Yeah. And he's playing. Yeah. Well, look at – and then, like, even Patrick Kane, he went through something worse. He was accused of rape, and there was no talk of him being suspended or nothing by the team. It's like, uh, no, Patrick I think Kane's going to play unless he goes full O.J. Simpson. I think you pull, you picked the wrong Kane, though. Oh, yeah, well, Evander Kane sucks, too. That's a bad <laughs> last name to have. But all he was doing was <laughs> paying just- off bitches that he knocked up, right? Yeah, but still, you know, you think a team would look into it more if they really wanted to get rid of a player, right? But obviously, they they don't want to get rid of that player, so then they just say, "Deal with it, man." You got you got from July to uh, end of October, beginning of September to deal with your problems off ice. Yeah, exactly. So, and, and hey, also Austin Matthews, what did he do this off season? Showed his bunghole to a security guard. I, that still makes me laugh, even though I know, like, I'm not supposed to. I'm sorry. I know the woman probably felt frightened. I'll never know what it's like to be a woman that dealing with something like that. But to be honest, that's just fucking funny to me. I guess, you know, for for context, she probably didn't know who the hell he was. Yeah, exactly. You play hockey? <laughs> this happened in Arizona. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So just uh, the cool thing about this Brendan Leipzig story is there's a bunch of tentacles attached to it. So, um, of course, Twitter is a shitstorm. Oh, fuck. 
I kept seeing so many things about hockey culture coming up again here. And it pisses me off because they say that this kind of behavior is all predominantly. So if you play hockey, you're predominantly yeah. a, a piece of shit fuck boy, right? And that's, that's what's wrong with this. They're like, oh, yeah, just another example of hockey culture. And then Sheldon Smith was like, yeah, you're supposed to save this for ch- spit and chicklets. And I went on there. He's the only guy that can get a rise out of me for some reason. And I was just, oh, wow, wow, it's on Barstool Sports. Boo, boo, boo. He literally stopped, he stopped cheering for Sidney Crosby, his favorite player, because he did an interview with Chicklets. Okay? Fucking stupid. Seriously? Yeah, he's a piece oh, of shit. fucking cancel culture. He's a libtard. <laughs> he does like, he has a good taste in music, though. No, he does Well, I no, I, no, he doesn't. And they're giving you that example. Anyways. Um, so yeah, I just want to get you, I wanted to get your opinion on that. Like, uh, cause I'm sure it's the same as mine because it's just ridiculous and hockey culture is more the chirping and, and just boys being boys. And I know that's a demonized term now because of toxic masculinity, but we got to get over ourselves on this shit. It's, it's ruining like something yeah, that's actually way more beautiful than they give it credit for. When you're talking about hockey, girls being girls is a, a saying you could say too. Yeah. Shopping, spending you know, too did. much money on getting your nails done. No, I was, I was talking about hockey. Oh. Women's hockey. They're girls being girls. They, they chirp and do the same things we do. Oh, yeah, of course. You can't tell me they don't. You know what? Wow, great insight, Brad. You're a great co-host. Um. <laughs> because that I, I included everyone. No, no, no. I support that. I'm trying to, I, I realize like there's, there's been, there could easily be a lot of character assassination based on what I say. So I'm going to try and come off as a little more likable. Uh, oh, really? And, and You're going to try that after the last episode? <laughs> uh, what? I just shit on America and basketball. That's it. I stand by everything I, I said. Buddy. Actually, BJ texted me after telling you, you should go play fucking golf. <laughs> I like golf. <laughs> I figured you would. <laughs> yeah, so fuck basketball. Anyways. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying not to come off as, as bad as I normally do, even though I know I'm joking. I know who I am. I'm just going to try and, you know, toe the line a little bit and see how it feels. It, it's this new sobriety thing, you know. It's, it's changed my life. Yeah, I think so. I'm You're still, still a dick to me. Yeah, well, of course. Of course I am. I have to be. It's, it's <laughs> toxic masculinity, Brad. Get used to it. Uh, did you see Brett Hall's comments in regards to the Leipzig situation? No, I didn't, actually. Yeah, well, that was the next thing that Twitter enjoyed. He pretty much just said, ah, yeah, I guess. It, it, he, he didn't really say he felt bad for him. But he, he like, was kind of asked about the situation, like how some of the stuff that players do now, it's so, they're so under the microscope. And this is a legitimate quote. He said this on Hockey Central. He goes, oh. and I quote, we did the same things. We said the same things, but there's no way to get caught. We can go out after games. We can go to strip clubs. We can go to bars, and we can do whatever we wanted, and it would all be hearsay. The fun is gone. The game is not fun anymore to me. How do you think says the, the guy? Go ahead. Says the guy that was fucking loaded the entire playoffs last year. Yeah, but that's why he's a fucking legend. Like that guy's hilarious. But you, and, and like he doesn't give a flying fuck. So to come out and say like and the thing that they picked up on Twitter a lot is because he in his quote he said we said the same things. That doesn't mean he's sitting there saying. I said to degrade women, and they're going to play that card, all these people. But oh, Brett Hall fuck. doesn't care. He's like the honey badger. Honey badger don't give a fuck. Brett Hall don't give a fuck. <laughs> I, didn't, I did not hear that. <laughs> that was, that's funny. Uh, you're not as good at uh, scanning the news feeds as I am on a tractor. That's right, because I haven't been on a tractor. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> Could you imagine all the stories, though, from all those players that played in that era? Oh, God. There's, there's some good ones. I know the, Oil, the Edmonton Oilers of the 80s, they, 
they had some times. Yeah. They the reason the Stanley <laughs> that Philip Pritchard has a job to go around traveling with the Stanley Cup is because the 1980s Edmonton Oilers lost the Stanley Cup. They lost it. That doesn't surprise me. They went to a strip club and with the Stanley Cup and lost it. They couldn't find it. <laughs> Can you imagine how fucking hard you got to be partying that you f- lose the greatest trophy in all of sports? What happens if a team just kept it? Well, like that the, happened. Uh, that happened in the Eagles. ECHL. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, that's why Philip Pritchard has a job, Brad. <laughs> Wait, was it the Colorado Eagles? I think so, yeah. Yeah, because they were an ECHL team, and then Colorado moved their farm team there, so they bought the Colorado Eagles to be their AHL franchise, yeah. Right, yeah. And then the Newfoundland team won or something, and they needed to get a new The Growlers. (laughs) Everyone's like, I don't have it. He doesn't have it. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. That's that's good stuff. So yeah, Brett Hall don't give a fuck. Brendan Leipzig obviously is uh yeah, he's a bit of a fuck boy and he pretty much it it's just sad that his career is ruined by someone leaking something he said in private. And that should be the story, but that's never gonna be the right. story. Not in this climate. <laughs> no, fuck no. And he, you know what? He can't even cry wolf with that situation either because no one's gonna fucking listen to him. Oh yeah. Yeah, your career is done. So like you said, Brad, I will delete every message you send me about uh, the kind of porno you watch and and how you hate uh, you hate Jews. Yeah, I know. I got you. <laughs> you're making you're, you're painting me into a terrible person here, Trent. <laughs> yeah, I got to deflect some of the heat away from me. So, you know, you just how do you do that? It's like if you run into a bear, what do you do? You push your friend and run away. See, in the same situation, I would be the one getting pushed over. Well, you got to start being the pusher and not the pushy. <laughs> no, it's because I'm fat and slow. Oh. You should start running with me. Yeah. No. Yeah, why not? Come to your house. I'll, I'll plan out our 2.5 miles, and we'll, we'll go at the same pace. My brother's got plans for me. He's yeah, almost I'm, done his personal training course. I know he's got plans for me too. And I'm like, I'm kind of doing my own thing here. I don't need you making me do more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so there's, there's already excuses from you. Yeah, exactly. My excuses, I just don't want to do it. I'm really trying to see where this podcast will go if I'm not trying to bring up the next topics. And so far I see you're just going to keep opening beers and checking your phone. Uh, I'm answering a text. Just give me two seconds. See what I got to deal you with people. Talk and now he's got, he's, he's uh, ordering more Nazi memorabilia. I am actually. The hat is now on the way. Sweet. You got to wear it next week. <laughs> All right. Well, since we're talking about uh, X players, I seen this with the uh, TSN posting or revisiting the '87 Canada Cup, and I'm sure this question has been asked on Twitter and Instagram and stuff. But let's ask it to ourselves. Okay. Let's start by saying in today's hockey, Gretzky and Lemieux. Or McDavid and Crosby? In today's hockey. In today's hockey. Well, I'm going to say in today's hockey, I'm going to take uh, Crosby and McDavid. Okay. Okay, and that's because they play in this in this time period where obviously right. Right. the defense no, no. is oh, better. Sorry, but, but if, if Gretzky and Lemieux were playing in this era, like if this was their hockey, right? Oh, that makes that way harder. Like McDavid's right. speed is is all world. Sidney Crosby is all world. Gretzky was the smartest player in the world. Mario Lemieux. That that's almost impossible. 
Um, I know, that's what I'm getting at. Because if you went the other way and said, K1 Gretzky and Lemieux era, uh, who's better, McDavid and Crosby or oh, Gretzky then and I, Lemieux? You still wouldn't be able to answer the question. No, I would. Can you imagine Connor McDavid shooting on goaltenders that – the Gretzky uh, that that were in that during the Gretzky and and Lemieux no years but remember I said that if that was if that was their hockey era I still think it'd be fun because McDavid with the, with the, with well McDavid would have a breakaway every shift but so did Gretzky yeah but I don't know. That's a hard question. What, what's your take? Because I'm just kind of spiraling. I'm trying to think I, of the I situations. Can't, I can't answer it. I really can't because to me, besides McDavid's uh, speed, but hockey smarts, him and Gretzky are comparable. I mean, you can't really compare anyone to Gretzky because he is the best player. And, and yeah, I would say but McDavid, then you, McDavid's hockey sense compared to Gretzky's is Gretzky's is far more superior. Like Gretzky was the kind of guy – where he, he relied on his, his IQ. Like they said, he knew where the puck was going to go all the time. And when you read – I remember reading this book, how he talked about how, how his dad trained him because, to, like, not think about where the puck's going because that's what everybody's thinking. In the moment, he goes, where's the puck going to be next? So Gretzky was always one step ahead of everybody. And I, I, I didn't see enough of Lemieux playing because, like, it, it's not as historic for me. But I did see more Lemieux play in his actual career. Fantastic. And, like – Crosby, he works his bag off, is his thing. And McDavid so is, but but McDavid, he's just he's he's the most skilled of all those four players. I think his speed and his hands at that speed are unmatched out of any hockey player. Right, but I mean, uh, the puck coming out of the zone with speed is only let's say forty percent of the game. Now you take Crosby and put him in the corner with the puck. He will beat McDavid every time. Yeah. Just with sheer strength. And that's where I'm saying that Lemieux is in comparison to Crosby in that sense. Whereas McDavid would know how to avoid the situation like Gretzky had to, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's, 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 it's almost, you can't give an answer for it, right? Yeah. If you're going to say, you know, if uh, Crosby and McDavid went back to Lemieux and Gretzky's time, well, I think McDavid would put up more points than Gretzky. Yeah, with his exactly. abilities that he has today, right? Yeah, it's one of those hypotheticals that you can almost not answer. But in the end, um, just, okay, if you just had to pick two players, everybody's in peak physical condition that they were in their primes. Who are you picking? You have to pick Gretzky and Lemieux because they are the two greatest players to ever play the game. Right. There and is no to, wrong answer. Realize. There was but no you also have to realize, too, that Lemieux's numbers are skewed because of injury and illness and everything else, right? Yeah. What happens if he plays a full career? What are his numbers like? Now, there's a lot that said that uh, a lot of people still think Lemieux's better, and only 90% of them are French. So the other 10% have <laughs> something to say about it, but... Um, actually, in relation to the, in relation to this, um, I was I seen a, cute. yeah, <laughs> I seen a, a story in the score, and it was saying that uh, Bobby Orr was commenting on Connor McDavid and said he has a chance to be the greatest player, like even greater than Howe, and he was getting shit on big time because they're like, uh, what about Gretzky? What about Lemieux? What about yourself? And the cool thing is when when it was considered that Bobby Orr. Wayne Gretzky and Mario Lemieux are the greatest players to ever play the game. They asked them who they thought the greatest player to ever play the game was. All three of them said Gordie Howe. Yeah, it's that just goes to show the respect they had for him. Yeah. Like, obviously, they see, see him at a completely different level than fans do, right? Yeah, like we can't even fathom how good Gordie Howe was because there's like nothing for us to really see of his game. You just hear right. stories, right? But that's how we're going to be talking about Gretzky and Lemieux and, like, granted, like, the players that are the best in the league right now. Uh, I'm honored. I get to watch Connor McDavid play every fucking game of his career, and it's amazing. Until he leaves and goes and plays in Arizona. No. That's just not even – that's not even cool to say. (laughs) Yes, it is. 
All right. Well, that was a good little tongue twister. Uh, tongue twister, not, uh, maybe math problem. I don't know. That was a tough question. <laughs> that was my hardest question yet. <laughs> okay. I'm going to ask you a question then. Since we're doing that, we got to fill up an hour, right? Um, I was listening okay, to the sure. Hockey News podcast on my way here, and they were talking about fucking basketball because of the uh, <laughs> the Michael Jordan documentary on or series on Netflix, The Last Dance. And you know yeah. what? I'm I'm gonna watch it. I think I'm gonna watch it because, like, uh, I'm sorry, and, and this is gonna be funny after hearing how he shit on the NBA so much last week. <laughs> is I fucking loved the Chicago Bulls when I was a kid. So I was like six years old, seven years old. I had a basketball hoop. That was it. I hadn't started playing hockey yet. So I fucking love Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen and Dennis Rodman and Steve Kerr. It was awesome. So I'm going to go watch that. But then the Hockey News pulls the question that, like, this is a great series. So he said, what would you like Netflix to cover? for a hockey docu-series like that? Is there a historic period of time that you would want to see documented? And you can be a homer if it's something personal or just anything you can think of. First thing you can think of. A period of time or a player in an era? Really, ju- really just any, any kind of documentation. So for an example, like for me, oh, okay. this is not my answer, but as an example, I'd love to see something about the Oilers 06 run. That was something that was special to okay. me and how like the team got dismantled and, and everything. It'd be a great story, right? So that's kind of what I'm getting at. Okay, so I would have to go with the 87 Canada Cup or the Summit Series because the- there was a shit ton of talent on those teams, but media wasn't a huge thing. Like You could watch it on TV, but not everyone got to watch it on TV. You know What was said behind closed doors stayed behind closed doors. There's so many aspects of to, to those series that we don't even know about to this day. I mean, obviously, there's documentaries on these, but not a docu-series like Netflix would be able to do. Yeah. No, that's good. Uh, one I actually thought of, because I love an underdog story so much, and I think that a cool one to follow would be the uh, Marco Sturm coaching – Germany to a silver medal in the Olympics. So it was the year that NHL players didn't go. So like they didn't get Leon right. Dreisaitl. They didn't get uh, Philip Grubauer in net. I, I think that'd be a really cool story. Probably not the I like the, the numbers are going to be huge on that. Like I might be the only one that actually thinks of that, but I like an underdog story like that. Yeah, that's cool. And like one of my, and like anything, any like uh, time, international hockey like had a great story like um like i in the 2002 gold medal olympic team there in uh, salt lake city that was like the first one i really watched when i was a kid and they did make a docu uh, documentary on it i have it on vhs one of my favorite things Fuck to watch yeah but it didn't go <laughs> into the players as much it's more about no Dretzky right. and Tambellini and Lowe which I don't know how that team won gold with those guys behind it because I know what Tambellini and Lowe did as with the Oilers but that was so cool to watch like how they documented it you see the players a little bit but they should have gone more into it so something like that would be cool didn't, didn't they talk more about the ice maker than the players in that series uh, he got some screen time in that doc series. He had uh, what's yeah. it, Dan Craig, I think. I don't remember his name. I just remember him as the loony guy. Oh yeah, that's and that's a great story. Like that's a great it hockey is. It's story. Cool. The the best My one. My son has a a book, and it's like five minute hockey stories. Yeah, but it's based off of actual hockey events. So like, there's a story about Subban, and then there's a story about Gretzky obviously and then another one about the loony in the ice for the, the olympic medal and both the women and men's win gold and yeah yeah no that was just a special time and uh but with that question they touched on the hockey news uh i don't know i think it was matt larkins had the best answer and he said just a docuseries on yarmir yager yeah <laughs> It would be literally girls gone wild. <laughs> well, yeah, but like he laid out like how he was a hot shot prospect. They won two Stanley Cups right away. So he already got that out. And then they said, and then 
winning gold in Nagano with the Czechoslovakians. And then he does bad in Washington, resurges in New York, then takes off for the KHL, becomes the first superstar in the KHL, then comes back to the NHL, and he is still playing in the Czech League right now. Like, he'd be a great guy. Like, there's some good personalities. Like, Paul Bissonnette's going to have a documentary or a movie on him at some point, right? Just fascinating people. Oh, I I don't know. You see, because of social media and stuff like that, you see backstories and stuff. And when he was with that, slept with that chick, and she's like, uh, give me (laughs) whatever, 20 grand, or else I'm going to post this picture. And then he posts the picture. He's like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, it's like, oh my God. Jerome, Jer- Jerome, Jerome, I almost said Jerome or Yager. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, headline. What's the headline going to read? Yarmir Yager sleeps with beautiful women. Yeah, no fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good, clean fun. All right. So now the question. Yeah, totally clean. Yeah, now the questions are, uh, the question part is, is over. Okay, we can move on. All right. Um, All right. Okay. So let's start with the the playoff format. Now the NHL released. Uh, I what well, was it really? The NHL releasing a statement that said that they they're kind of leaning towards the 2014 playoff. We kind of touched on it a That's, little bit last yeah. last episode, and like I think you know how I feel about that. I think that's a little bit better than some of the other ideas but like how do you go about a 2014 playoffs i don't know i mean in all fairness that's probably the ideal thing to do because in a 24 team playoff format the teams that were say climbing the standings and the teams that are following the standings will both get to play in a playoff series even though maybe they didn't deserve it or they did deserve it or whatever right but it's do they have divisions, kind of like baseball, have wild cards divisions, and then division again, and then a conference final, and then a Stanley Cup final? I don't know. I don't know what the format from that standpoint would be. Yeah. Um, the thing that I – like, if they're doing a 24-game or 24-team playoff, I think the teams that were, like, on the cusp or not – all the way, I th- I still think the top eight teams should be automatically in the playoffs, and then the ones under like so that's sixteen. So the other eight teams play like sudden death one game what? series. Where do you? Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay. yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean by the wild card, right? Those would be the wild card teams. Yeah, then they can say that maybe. So that means maybe one or two games. It, I like best of three right. might be wow. too much, but like if it's single game for the first little section of those eight teams in the final four, they're due best of threes and to get that, to get into the playoffs. Let's go full like minor hockey and make it a best of two total points. Oh yeah. With like goals <laughs> for accounting. Yeah. Yeah. Like so you I can wish- lose the first game 10-1 and then if you won the next game 11 nothing, you won. Fair enough. Hey, that would make that would be different, and that would actually probably be a bit of a draw because think about it. Like a team could, it'd be kind of cool actually. Like pulling the goalie when you're, um, when you're up, when you're winning, to try and Nine get that thing or whatever. Yeah, like <laughs> I guess it would be. It would you really see who's the best coaches there about adjustments because it's fucking do or die. That might actually exactly. be exciting. You're talking me more into that. Because I want the, I just seriously say start playoffs by point percentage. But now hearing this, I'm like, because then at least those those teams that were on the cusp think they get a fair shake. Right. So my thought is, is that if they're going to a 24 team format for playoffs, when the NHL does resume hockey, what they should do is uh, say 10 days of exhibition games with those 24 teams and then move right into playoffs. Don't finish the season. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, yeah, I wish that the, they released kind of more of a format, what they're thinking about that. But, uh, like, I think that that makes the most sense. So, and anything that gets us hockey this year, regardless of it, like, I am fucking dying for it. 
Did you hear that the NBA is talking about possibly playing with no fans all next season too? Well, good, because then that's how many fans should be at NBA games. Shut up, Trent. What I'm getting at here is what happens if the NHL considers something like that? Uh, get fucked. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll inject myself with coronavirus in the dick to make sure we have fans. <laughs> How is that going to help anything? I don't know. Maybe that's that is the, literally not going to help. Maybe thing. maybe that's the antidote. What if I figure it out that way? Apparently, if you inject it into your genitals, um, uh, you you cared. Well, I guess you gotta take one for the team. You know, you never know. You never know. You just gotta take some Corona to the dick. To get... <laughs> and I'll get to be like Katniss in the Hunger Games. I volunteers tribute. <laughs> That's how much I miss hockey. They'd have, they'd have to use a pretty small needle, Trim. Doesn't matter how big the needle is. <laughs> oh, Lord. It's just how you inject it. <laughs> yeah. I've had a needle in my privates before. Not it yeah. itself. Fuck, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I couldn't have set up a better joke for anybody than that. <laughs> but, uh, yes, I have been injected and numb there. That's what I mean. So, oh, I, can okay. I can handle it. it was a You're scary. the man. You're my hero. I know. 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 So now, with... I guess let's take the premise that it is a 24 format, 24 format playoff and they draft, they do the draft before the playoffs are done. Yeah. I hate How that. Is it going to work? Uh, there, one, one, There's like, so many go ahead. I said, there's so many layers to that because by drafting before the playoffs are done, there's picks that, could move there's conditional picks that can move you know it's what do you do <laughs> yeah I, I i hate that i hate that entire idea um i actually heard i actually i don't know i i was listening to a podcast and they were kind of speculating on it and and then it came to me today on the tractor the nhl's kind of been wanting to change the age for a draft eligible player from 18 to 19 why don't okay. what what makes sense to me is you should be this is just an idea what if they cancel the nhl draft because of everything that's going on and next year it becomes a 19 year old draft we are never going to have a better time to do it because in any other scenario if you want to change it from 18 to 19 the draft age which it there's a lot of gms that apparently want that you're going to have one of the worst draft classes in history of just all the guys that didn't get picked at that age group becoming your first overall pick might not ever play in the NHL, right? So knowing that, why right. don't you take advantage of that? All the conditions go forward one year. That makes sense to me. I don't know why they haven't thought. That, what do you think? Makes, Is that a good idea? Well, from that aspect, yeah, it makes sense. But logistically, it's going to have to – it's going to spill over, right? Because then if they're going to a 19-year-old draft, then players should have an extra year of eligibility in, say, the juniors, uh, you know, things like that, right? Because that gives them an extra year to get into the NHL. Yeah. So what happens to those players that are, were already on the way out? Now do they stay? Now a team's got too many players. Well, there's going, to be, there's going to be a transition period if they're going to do that anyway. But, like, you might as well take the what, what advantage of this situation. And, of course, it, would, it should also be treated that, like, with the, uh, the uh, exceptional status would become NHL now, you know? Right. Yeah. So, there will be, like, because Connor McDavid could obviously play in the NHL at 18. So, when he was an 18-year-old, right. if that was the case, it was a 19-year-old draft, he would get exceptional status to become to the NHL. Right. And then because most of the players, most players, like other than let's say the top 10 picks in any draft, usually play their 19 year old year in junior anyway. 
but you should be able to have the option to put them in the minors. Like what, there would be an if, agreement. What if, what if they have a 19 year old draft with three exceptional statuses picked every year? And for those three exceptional, uh, as 18 year olds, all 31 teams name is in the hat equally. I don't understand. Huh? Well, okay, so the draft is 19. So if if you're 19 uh, and you're, say, Detroit. Okay, so let's say Le- Lafayette is now 19. Detroit picks them, right? And that draft gets done. But then there's three players, obviously chosen by a board, that are 18 and are given exceptional status. Well, those three players get drafted in that same draft at the end and all 31 teams names are in the hat and three get picked out of it and they can pick those three players. Uh, So now, now there's great players possibly going to good hockey teams, not shitty ones. Like like David and Edmonton. No, I don't like that at all. No, I think it'd be cool. I think uh, you want to change it. Why can't I fucking change it? (laughs) Because I thought mine through. You're spitballing. <laughs> Honestly, I don't mind giving you credit. Well, but that's I, what the fucking NHL is doing. They're spitballing ideas and it's coming out of their ass. Yeah, but they obviously don't know what the fuck they're doing. We do, right? So, <laughs> uh, no. I, I'll give you an A for creativity on that. And, hey, that's a Jeff Merrick take what you just did. Merrick does those yeah, all well, the time. That's like me too, so, you know, whatever. We're yeah, bros. He's the kind of guy that I never thought would have tats. He just seems you never like, expected it. He just seems like the nerdy kid you went to school with that you made fun of, and now that he's like accomplished, you're like, he's actually a really good guy, which he is. I love Jeff Merrick. <laughs> I always love Jeff Merrick, but you can just tell the kind of kid he probably was, right? Nothing against him. We all have different. We all grew up different. You're right. We did. <laughs> no, right. but but with the exceptional players, uh, I like the idea. But like, there could be three every year. That's it, three. But then it's up to the GM's discretion that they want to draft an 18-year-old there, right? Right. But what I'm getting at is that because they're, they're falling under exceptional status as an 18-year-old, they don't make the draft as a 19-year-old. So say Edmonton finishes third in the West this season, but next year when that really good player could be in a draft, they finish 31st. Right, so they don't have a chance to draft that player at eight, at nineteen. Yeah, but that's yeah, the way it goes. That's the way it goes. Like with the draft but lottery, no, night, you, you just change the age to nineteen, and that's not fair to a team that you know was projecting to pick someone at eighteen, and now they're not. Okay, well, maybe like for the next draft, if you do the to the nineteen year old draft, and like I said, all the conditions just go forward one year and everything, and, right, and but what happens if next year? Detroit finishes second overall in the, in the that, East. That's what I'm getting to right now. There would have to be a uh, maybe an average. So if Detroit finishes first or like worst, and then they're sixth worst the next year, that gives them a draft ranking of third overall. Or you know what I mean? Like because that's the that's the midpoint. So like if Edmonton finishes 20, 20th, and then or if they were supposed to have the twentieth pick, and then they finish like if they win the President's Trophy, the thirty one then their their weight is like 25. You know what I mean? See, that now one, you're just spitballing. How's mine any better or any worse? Because mine is smarter. <laughs> <laughs> I got an ego, Brad. You got to feed it. Mmm, <laughs> old duels, Amber. I guess at the end of the day, the NHL trying to draft with the play- playoffs either ongoing or not started yet makes no sense to me. It, it pretty much voids every trade that happened this year because how can you have a conditional draft pick for this year when they may not meet the criteria because they're not playing? Yeah. Hey, you're finally speaking uh, sensically. <laughs> Is that a word? Fuck you. 
<laughs> yeah, it's going to open up uh, more like a bigger can of worms than it's going to solve to have it soon. Like, obviously, oh. it would be nice to be able to watch something hockey related that's not recycled history or top tens, even though I enjoy <laughs> those. But it'd be something new and speculation. But there's always going to be an asterisk b- b- beside a bunch of these picks. Like, so why uh, don't they just say fuck it? Ha- tell all players that they know they're draft eligible. Stay in shape. We're going to do a draft in August. You don't know where you're going to go, but get your have your stuff ready. And you know you might be going to NHL camp, or you might be going back to your junior team. You know, like yeah, what's wrong with that? Yeah, and I think Bill Daly said that they were concerned that, like, you know, you don't want – because the the European leagues are going to start up in September like they always do. And they right. and they said it would be unfair to draft players there that have a chance to make the NHL club. But, like, realistically, they're saying, like, Lucas Raymond and uh, is probably – I think he was the top-rated European player – uh, he's likely not going to be ready for the NHL and is going to play in Sweden next year anyway, right? But but I, even even if he was going to play in the NHL, why couldn't they make some sort of exception for this year's draft saying, you know, he's he's training with Sweden. Let's say Detroit picks him and they want him to play in the NHL and be with the team for their camp. Well, there should be no, nothing that says that he can't come over because all he was doing was playing hockey until his – draft selection and all paperwork was done and whatever else. Right. I, I don't get why that that's such an issue. Yeah, me too. I, I told, I, I'm totally agreeing with you there. Yeah. I'm in the same boat. Yeah. Cool. I think, yeah, there's, you Start have to bitch. <laughs> doing all the work because you're tired again. <laughs> uh, that's pretty fun. Okay. Any other hockey stories you can think of? <laughs> this we just have, actually go ahead. No, we're because we're in quarantine and quarantine specials left and right. What do you think all of the players are doing with their off time? Hmm. Well, based there's, on what there's what probably I've, a very very broad difference of what players are doing yeah everybody that's a family man is obviously just honestly teaching their kids like that seems to be like anytime chicklets has a guy on <laughs> that that like even lucic just did uh chicklets there last week or on on thursday and his daughter uh came to show her his dress or her new dress at one point and he was just laughing and he goes, yeah, I'm just, just being a dad now. So I think that's most of it. But then there's single guys talking about wanting to degrade fat women in Winnipeg. So, uh, <laughs> different strokes, right? <laughs> and, and just, just because obviously I follow the flames, uh, Elias Lindholm, I'm pretty sure has went a hundred percent lumberjack. Like that's he's even grown a beard and, <laughs> so you know what it's like are they taking advantage of this as you know time that they never usually have probably and, yeah. you know there are some players probably battling some demons within that are going to come back and be totally different players yeah has like, anyone ch- yeah oh oh i was thinking i was thinking for the worst too um obviously may is mental health well, month. yes obviously and that like that's got to yeah. be like these guys all they a lot of these guys all they know is hockey so when you, you take that away from them it's it's probably gonna totally. be rough there's, there's there's two sides to a coin so i mean you know there is gonna be those players too yeah so um yeah pretty much though like they're pretty much in the same boat as us you know no they're not well yeah they just have a lot more money <laughs> <laughs> Like, Someone is driving their boat for them. <laughs> yeah. Well, like Connor McDavid, he did chicklets there on Monday. And uh, he was driving an RV from Edmonton to Toronto. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, he was because... staying Yeah, because he was staying in Edmonton for the bit. I think he was more hopeful. But now that he's got more time, he's like, I'm just going to go back home. And you can't fly. Or, well, right. I don't know. Oh, totally. But, or, I'm... Well, I'm sure he could call Daryl Cates. Hey, 
get my PJ like landing on my helipad at my house, send me out to Ontario <laughs> and he would do it. <laughs> How are you going to land a private jet on a fucking helipad, Trin? Oh. You got to at least be realistic with your stories. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a fucking aerospace engineer. <laughs> oh, now they're going to space. Go fuck yourself, Brad. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just saying Connor McDavid, such a good guy. He he drove cross country. And then again, what a oh, great cool. time to do it. Totally. Because uh, in their say two month off season on average, because guys start training on their own yeah. in August or mid August. They don't want to do stuff if they don't have to, probably. They're they're just they're humans. They're like us we want time off but we want that time off to do nothing now they've been sitting idle mid-season for i don't even know how many days it's been now i've i didn't even realize we're sunday today till about an hour ago so i mean you know why not get in a motorhome and fucking drive it across the country yeah you know? why not with your dog yeah smash beers the whole way Quit talking about my pastimes like that. Okay. That's the thing. I wouldn't my, trust you driving a motorhome. Uh, why not? I'm I'm a great motorhomer driver. Motorhomer driver. <laughs> I, I'd rather drive a motorhome than a than haul a fucking big ass trailer like I did for my family reunion. I got flipped off by kids in car seats, man. Nice. Yeah, uh, I was driving my dad's sh- like what. What's his truck? He bought like a farm Long truck. Diesel? Yeah. yeah. And it fucking overheated because I was pulling the trailer like, way too big for it, I think. And like no, I was. because you're driving too fucking fast. No, I wasn't, man. I couldn't get above 90 clicks. And I'm on BC roads <laughs> where like pretty much, you know, the white line is the end of the road before you're in the ditch and you're running into a fucking shale mountain up like past Chetwin. Okay. And, I'm going to stop you right there. Yes. It's, you can't go faster than 90 in the, that it, part of BC. The speed limit is 90. Okay, well, everybody else, every truck driver behind me that <laughs> honked the horn because I was holding them up. On, and every, like I said, I was flipped off by kids in car seats. I swear to God, man. Like, it, was, it was terrible. But I'd rather drive a fucking big-ass motorhome. That story was so boring. Well, it, 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 fucking, <laughs> it fucking killed yesterday at dinner, okay? <laughs> Over the mashed potatoes and gravy. <laughs> yeah, it's when I do my best, especially on my dad's side of the family, because nobody's as quick-witted as me in that family. I have so much fun. I make fun of my uncle's drinking habits. I make fun of my uncle's nose. I make fun of my short uncle be- because like, his toes don't touch the... He can't reach the pedals in his truck. <laughs> you really are just a dick. <laughs> yeah, to that side of the family because that's what that's how we show love on that side. On oh, the other okay. side of my right. family, I'm the one that gets chirped because I'm not as quick witted as them. So I'm punching bags. Uh, so what, yeah, you get, you give. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially like since I'm sober now, I have to find some way to amuse myself. Amuse. Yeah, exactly. Okay, is that all of our hockey stories now? I think so. We're, that was actually pretty decent. That was good. Yeah, how, when did we start? I don't know. This is so weird not having the time there because you can't <laughs> you can't tell how long we've been podcasting for. I don't know. You guys well, know. Yeah, we're probably close to an hour. At 8.20, you sent me a text saying that you had sent the, the – Request to record, so it's been close to an hour for sure. All right. Is there any uh, non-hockey topics you want to cover before we we shut her down? Well, personally, uh, one thing I want to mention, I guess it's not really a, we don't have to talk about it. I just, I would like to thank uh, all frontline workers, uh, essential services, things like that. I know some people think this is blown out of proportion uh, with isolation and quarantine and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, whether it's blown out of proportion or not, these people have to go to work every day and face adversity, uh, especially my brother being a paramedic now and stuff like that. 
just kind of need to throw that out there. Yeah, and and I'm pretty sure like almost everybody has has a friend or family member that is is right, uh, exactly. on that front line. And yeah, it is important. Like you said, we're 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 kind of conspiracy theorists, and and we have our own opinions on this whole thing. But the but the one yeah, you're right. The one thing that will we'll never change is that yeah, we 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 forget how important these people are and how amazing they are and what they do for our uh, every single community in the world. Uh, I love that you bring this exactly. up. Uh, this is a like a we, we'll 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 send out the knuckles here. You got the Chuck and Knucks uh, stamp of approval, and I wish that we could do more because like it seems like that's the thing. I hate these corporations. And everybody being oh giving parades for all of our frontline workers, and it's like gratitude is great and it's nice to show appreciation. But we need and maybe this is something we should do is uh, try and do more because uh they're always there for us in our time in need and and we should be there for them for what they do for us more and um you know like if you guys can donate to any uh charity that's uh gonna help fight the battle or just do anything something as simple as like if you see one of these frontline workers do something nice for them uh, yeah totally or and, even as simple as you're at the grocery store and you're waiting in line and just be patient be yeah. kind to the people that are running those tills. You know, you wouldn't believe how many times a day they probably get shit on because of the procedures they have to follow and everything. You know, it's it's not fair to them. They're yeah. just doing their job. Exactly. People don't be – stop being dicks is what I'm really trying to say. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, like, stop being dicks. If, even you're going through a drive through even a smile is something you can do. Um, yeah, you know totally. what they say? Like not to get too corny, but one act of random kindness can really change the world. Not that I'm tr- quoting the movie Evan Almighty, which is a beautiful movie, but it, it's a totally true thing. Um, and and one thing I want to say is like I almost I almost wanted to tell a story about something I did, uh, but I'm not going okay. to do that because I I, I feel Why like not? it huh? It's doing it for the wrong reasons. The thing I hate the most is when okay. you see somebody okay. on social media being like, I did a great thing today. And all you're doing there by posting that to social media or using a platform for that is being like, look how great I am. So I, th- I think the best things, I love when you hear stories, like look at the Guy Fieri thing going around. He'd never, right. he exactly. never, he's done so many good deeds, but he does not need the press for it. It came out some other way. And I respect that more yeah. than someone that's patting themselves on their own back. So anybody out oh, there, honest angry. to God, in these times, and this is uh, also relating to May being mental health month mental health is is something that's very important we both have had our own issues with that and honest to god just smile be a good human being during these times because everybody's going through something we're all fighting a fight right now the world is upside down and the if you're going to be a shit person get the fuck out of my way we need more good good stories good people little things do go a long way i know like i can give you an example i've had like you ever been in, go through a drive through and someone pays for your order? It just yep. puts a smile on your face. Totally. You have a good day. And if you are in a drive through and someone pays for your order, pay for the next person's order. You can do that forever. I want to exactly. know, yep. I want to know who the piece of shit is that just does not pay the next person. I can't do it. Every time I've had my order paid for me, I can't help it. I'll be like, I don't care if it's more or less, whatever it is. You just do it. Right. One t- one time I was in, when we lived in Grand Prairie, I was in the Tim Hortons drive through and <clears throat> the person in front of me bought my, my coffee. So I was like, oh, well, awesome. I'll buy the person behind me. Mm-hmm. Well, it was, uh, <laughs> the order was 60 some bucks. And they're oh, like, really? And I'm like, I got to do it. Yeah, you <laughs> can't not. Do it. Exactly. And, when, and- I, when I pull up. When I pulled out of the drive-thru, they were literally laying on the horn and like hanging out of the vehicle, just, just waving at me. He's like, obviously trying to thank me. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Yeah. yeah. You got you got to do it. Wasn't just, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like, I, I if I have a $4 order and I have to pay a $12 one, it, I'll probably be like, fuck. But you still do it. Because what does that mean? And good karma. Good karma. I believe in that. Good karma. Yep. You betcha. So totally. now, wow, that's the so most. Now that we got that out of the way. Okay. Yeah, I was like, wow, we've been really <laughs> nice and sincere. We we're getting off brand. 
I, I totally thought you were going to say, okay, so now we got that out of the way. Plandemic. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> let's talk about it. All right, all right, all right. All right, yeah, we're at the conspiracy part of the podcast. And uh, I started a fire on my Facebook feed. <laughs> Did you see that? Holy fuck. Did you ever? Uh, you, wanna, <laughs> you know what you know, the funniest part about it? I'm like half trolling. I meant everything I said. But when I post something on social media, I know no. what's going to come from it. I know there's going to be. You're fishing. <laughs> you're fishing. I know. You, I literally. You're, you're like a fisherman. You put a hook on the end of the line knowing you're going to catch something. But you don't know how big that fish is going to be. <laughs> kind of. I, I, and I, it's not like I do it just for that. I do it to say my own piece on something. And I also do enjoy watching people argue on, on the internet. Especially when I know the people and know they don't know each other. It makes it even more fun. So if anybody was on that that listens to this, fuck sakes. That was, that was a, it gave me a lot of, every, every two hours, I'd check it. Just see where it was and maybe stoke the fire a little more. And yeah, but. Uh, My favorite part is on social media when people are arguing, everyone's more entitled about their opinion than someone else's, no okay. matter how fact or fiction it is. And regardless of the fact that it's someone's opinion. Yeah. It, my opinion can be as wrong as, uh, you know, let's say everyone's asking how to spell pool. And I say it's P-O-O-L-E. And everyone just shits on me because I spelled it wrong. Well, my opinion was is that's how I think it's spelled. You don't have to shit on me, for, you know, pretty much calling me a terrible human being because <laughs> I spell it differently than you do. <laughs> oh, yeah. I would have spelled it P-E-W-L. You didn't need to go polo because then it just showed even in your analogies you're a fucktard. No. <laughs> 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 uh, I made that as a terrible comparison, but I'm just saying, you know, I everyone's know. entitled to their opinion, and then you just get this fucking dumpster fire shit storm because everyone's smarter than everyone else. You know? Yeah. Well, that and my fa the other thing that's funny is I went and commented at one point because there was two people on my post that were like going at each other, and I and I went on there and I was just like. I am shocked you guys weren't able to convince one another of your opinion. Because yeah, nobody in the history of the world has ever gotten to an argument on social media and walked away with their mind changed. <laughs> it never happens. <laughs> ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> and that's why it's fun. And that's so, why I love it. <laughs> okay. I guess for a, a little bit of maybe underlying context... One side of an argument is always, well, I did my research, you know, this university wrote a paper, you know, saying that X plus Y equals MC squared, let's say. And then the other person says, well, I just, from doing research on the internet, maybe not from that university, but someone that has a doctorate says that X plus Y equals 75. And then literally the first person says, no, that's wrong. Sorry. The university mm -hmm. said that, you know, this is what it is. And that's the only way you can go about it. But the, the doctor that says it equals 75 is a doctor. It, you, it's simple to go on Google and search the doctor's name and you can go to Wikipedia. Let's use that as an example, because that's mm -hmm. a common one used and you'll start reading. And it, Wikipedia is just shitting on this doctor. But then you go to, uh, there's websites where there, it's kind of like Yelp for doctors. And all the reviews for the doctor is like, best doctor I've ever had, so intelligent, so patient, everything else. How far do you go with your research on either side of the spectrum just to tell the other person they're wrong? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the problem with it. You can find a source. You can find any source to make your opinion work. And that, right. in my opinion, that's falsifying evidence pretty much, right? And that's why, but like... That works on both sides of the argument. No, though, it does. Right? You know, and, right? and like I said, there are people, like, you know, one thing is, like, uh, just... I, I, I still like going into 9-11 conspiracies, right? And um, 
I've changed my opinion on things a lot based on what I heard. I can be reasonable about what I believe on that. And if someone brings me new information, I'm willing to consider it with this, right? So for an, uh, to use an example, because we're going to tie this back to the pandemic is, and like you said, just, okay. A lot of my research is through YouTube videos because it's easy. It's easier to crunch. Like we don't have a lot of time to do this. It's kind of recreational for us. Right? So yeah, yeah sure. I might, it, it's the fastest way to get information to you. But then you can fact check afterwards, okay? Right. So that's how I'm going to look totally. at things. Now, I don't believe that a plane ever hit the Pentagon. And I went and listened to a bunch of podcasts that are trying to prove that, no, a plane did hit the Pentagon. And you want to know something? I get 30% new information that changes my mind a little bit one way or another, right? That's how I do these things. I'm not going to be able to say this to anybody in a social media post about what we were arguing about, right? But when it comes right. to this pandemic thing, the first thing I will notice is that if the, like with the lady that was in this video, all you see is character assassination on her abilities through every corporate media. If you know how we dig down deep into- Exactly. That's the first sign. Because, and it, I don't know how people can comprehend that that's possible. Like, you don't, it doesn't need to be like a big, like there's five people that control the world. It's how much information gets spread to like control things your own way. It's reasonable to think about that. And when you see these patterns repeating and repeating and repeating, you know, there's more to it. So this video being taken down is all I use as my main point that there's something in there. I don't know how much of it's 100% true. I haven't had the time to delve right into it. But they're like the videos of the doctors that are on there, they're real doctors. They're not actors. And we can prove that. Whoa. Why don't we yeah, take totally. their word? Why can't we take their word? There are always going to be physicians and scientists that disagree on things. But unless you are that type of scientist, you're not going to understand it yourself. So, and, and I mean, that's exactly it. So they have... I, everyone says, well, why are they posted on YouTube? You know, there's so many other places that they can post it on. Where do people go to watch uh, Justin Bieber sing his, you know, latest hit? Probably Cobblegox.com. It's YouTube. Oh, YouTube, sorry. <laughs> it's not Justin Bieber's website. You know, who wants to go to watch a recipe on how to make cookies? They go to YouTube. So why wouldn't someone who is a filmmaker say, I'm going to post this to YouTube where everyone already goes. Mm -hmm. So people using uh, a YouTube video as a, a leg legitimate argument against the case is a terrible argument. Mm -hmm. No, exactly. And then, and then the, the doctor that's in this video that we're talking about, pandemic you can watch other YouTube videos or search other doctors' names. And in their writings, they talk about this doctor in the same way that this um, video projected her. So it's not just her claiming that she was turned against or, um, you know, mm -hmm. used, I guess would be a way to put it. There's other doctors that believe that too. So what the fuck? And like, you know, it, and uh, not like just an opinion anymore. Yeah, exactly. And another good point that, and the thing is I, I noticed not one person brought up any point uh, that, that made sense to argue any points I made. Like I, uh, the thing I found the most fascinating is like, what does this lady have to gain from putting this out? Exactly. She's not selling a book. She's not doing anything. She's putting out information she finds important. So that makes me think she's doing something like when, when I, the guy that was on Joe Rogan that first talked about the, the, how he, he was telling fucking blatant lies that this virus was airborne. He said that on the Joe Rogan podcast and I'm like, why the, and so I was scared. I was like, if this is airborne, this is worse. Then my cousin who's a nurse said, no, it's not. It's droplet. I'm like, well, no, on Joe Rogan, they said it. And she goes, Oh, well, He's wrong, flat out wrong. I went back. Yeah, this guy is selling a book on, on how to react to a pandemic. 
he has something to gain from putting out false information because exactly and that's the thing nobody has ever brought up if you can find one good example why this woman is profiting from or or how she's profiting from it then i'd be more inclined to believe this doesn't mean anything no i agree and it's like uh I can't remember what it's called now. I, I'm sure I sent a picture of it to you yesterday. Netflix has this, uh, a yeah. docu-series on the coronavirus. They they figured it out. I forget what it's called. Fuck, I wish I could remember it's what it's called. It's called Coronavirus called. Explained. Essentially, they, right. That's what it was. Yeah. And it it's as if they have it figured out. But then we have, you know, mainstream media telling us the doctors still don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. And then even the conspiracy side of things those those doctors still don't know what it is but netflix has a, a series saying that they've got to figure it out i didn't watch it so maybe maybe it's that's not the case maybe it's just clickbait but still there the premise is is that no one knows what this is but there's a whole lot of chatter if you will around it not being what we're told and all of that chatter is getting taken down as fake news. Mm-hmm. If it was really fake news, why wouldn't they just leave it on there? You know, exactly. say you have to call you have to call it fiction, but it can stay on there. Fucking a hundred people a year in BC say they see Sasquatch, and then they put a four part series on YouTube saying how they're tracking it. Exactly, and that, yeah, that was another point that came up in the my, in that feed there. Uh, my cousin, my cousin in law, I guess. Uh, was saying that because uh, someone was arguing about how YouTube has to take down stuff that's dangerous to people. And I'm like, how? how? Okay. You're at the, and I was arguing for free speech there. You're allowed to say whatever you want. Right. I forget what right. example I used, but it, I think it was something crazy. I said something like, uh, I can say that I seen a Sasquatch and then I seen somebody shape shift into a little tiny bug and became a lizard. And then he, he shipped off and landed on the moon. I can say that I can go on national television and say that. And people would be like, this guy's fucking crazy, which yeah, obviously that's pretty crazy, but I can say that that's what free speech is. Right. Censoring this video is a violation of the fucking first amendment of the fucking constitution. This is bullshit. And And we're all so fucking brainwashed. This is where I go. Alex Jones on it. we're, We're all fucking. Oh, that was a bad impression. What's Alex Jones? And we're all fucking brainwashed. Yeah, that's close. I can't do it, so. Now, I used to be able to do it, but it's it's getting hard. It turns into Joey Diaz halfway through. So, I mean, and, and that's that's part of it, right? Is why can't they put something up that they created and leave it there? I mean, that happens every day. People create content every day. So the filmmaker's name for the pandemic is Mickey Willis. And he's based out of California. And I had seen on another post somewhere saying that he obviously broke down the video and stuff like that. And he was very uh, sensible about how he argued and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But the first thing he said was, is uh, the filmmaker doesn't state anywhere in the video that he made in on all this. And literally it took me five seconds and I found his Facebook page and it sends a link to his website and in there it says, I created this film as uh, this video as part of a film that he had planned to release, I think, in August. And he asks everyone to share it on every social media um, website that they can, wherever, you know, the, the big ones. And he said, it's free to use. Mm-hmm. So that guy that did all the, you know, intensive research to shit on this pandemic documentary couldn't find the filmmaker's name really yeah it's a little suspicious right? so so they they did the research for the parts that they wanted to depict or you know prove that they were right and that was wrong but then the other parts which mainstream media does that they try to make it look like you know uh a bad guy's doing it or the person's not taking credit because they know it's not real. Yeah. Stuff like that. It, it's if it wasn't all, real. If it was blatant, it would still be on YouTube. It wouldn't be getting taken down. Exactly. 
It's all doxing is what it comes to. Like they'll, they can twist it and turn it to anything to do. Like I did in text right. messages exactly. to you today, making you sound like you, you were a Nazi. Right. Yeah, totally. We went from talking about, it. yeah, we went from talking about the Waco docu-series and I turned that into you being a Nazi. That's what the media right. and anybody that is for this agenda, if you want to think of it as an agenda, is doing to, to this film. And it, that's right. a problem. Totally. And uh, there was another point there I wanted to make in yeah. regards to um, in regards to censorship. Uh, and once again, hey, remember, remember, it just fell out, fell, so, it's rolling away. And, and I'm not saying that... Uh, hundred percent of the information in that documentary is true. There's, there's Netflix documentaries where as soon as it's released, there is people that are in the documentary saying that, no, that's not true. They didn't make it out to what I wanted it to be. That's not what I said. So for people to say, well, it's, it, you know, it's, it's not real. They're, they're lying. Yeah. Well, then there's a whole bunch of documentaries you need to take off Netflix. Well, exactly. I don't know why I'm shitting on Netflix so much. It, 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 other YouTube documentaries. It, um, actually, yeah, I remember what I wanted to say as well. Um, as soon as I watched the... So I watched that pandemic and I watched it with my dad. And my dad, I love him to death. And, I ho- and if he ever hears this, I'm sorry, daddy. I love you, okay? You're, you're a great human being. You got a great heart. But my dad is pretty much the equivalent of a Trump supporter that watches Fox news. He'll see something once and he's going to believe it. <laughs> so my dad is telling everybody right. about this right now. And I'm like, hold on, dad, we got to see the other side. So immediately this is, this video is huge. It was viral. It went everywhere, kept getting taken down, put back up. It was reason it caused a, uh, such a stir. First of all, never seen nothing about on, on Yahoo or Google news. Interestingly enough. Okay. But on YouTube, there's a whole bunch of um, responses to it and people with channels and subscribers and doctors completely shitting on it, saying it's all factual. It's, it's bullshit. It's incorrect. This is just a scare tactic, like totally doxing the entire thing. And then I look in the comments there is a three to one ratio of dislike to like on those videos. People that just watch the pandemic are for it. And you know what I mean? Do you, are you following what I'm saying? Yeah, I get it. Yeah. 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 Yep. So that's encouraging for me to see that like more people are kind of like not willing to trust everything that we hear from like, you know, your, your Coca-Cola and Pepsi, your, your Fox news and CNN or whatever the mainstream is, right. whatever it is. Right. And I remember the funniest thing is look at who these people use as sources. It's always the wash or the Washington post and Snopes Huffington post. or Huffington post. Yeah. And Snopes, yeah, and Snopes is the worst. I've looked at stuff that they've debunked and it's like, they don't actually give you any fact or reason for why they're debunking it they just like it's character assassination and and wherewithal and and like they on snopes they will be like for example the vegas shooting they uh they would just be like claim there were multiple shooters at vegas and their answer would just be there was no eyewitness testimony that said there was multiple shooters that's all they put they don't put evidence to that and we know that's a lie so snopes right. as soon as right. someone uses snopes as their credible source you're fucking done. You're not correct. It's no different than on Facebook when someone shares something and Facebook has their fancy fact checker and they'll say, nope, this isn't a fact. I seen that too. Or like, this is partially yeah, false. Yeah. It's like, really? Really, Zuckerberg? I've seen how you drink water, you fuck. <laughs> but bringing up the Huffington Post, I'm pretty sure it's them that had wrote uh, an article in mid-April. In regards to a doctor in the U.S. working at a university that had made major steps in understanding or... Oh, yes. I know where you're going. I, I can't remember what the title was, but it was... He, he was... 
he had there was large conclusions made with the coronavirus, something along those lines. What was it? Three weeks later, he shot dead, and then the murderer shot himself in his car. Yeah, that sounds like one of those good old suicide plays that the Kennedy family had happened to them or anybody had to do anything with the Kennedy assassination or anybody that had to do with any type of whistleblowing in any which way. But I said, man, this situation, this, this doctor wasn't whistleblowing anything. He was just working on, you know, finding, let's say a cure and he ends up dead. So how close was he that he ends up dead? You can't tell me that's just a fucking coincidence. Like I said, how many coincidences do you need to see before it stops being a coincidence? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's where this is. And that's where, like, you know, I, I'd say I, I go through a cycle of, on my conspiracies. And it usually starts with when something happens, you, you're you're following the news. You're believing what you're hearing. Right. You're getting your information. And then you start questioning things. And then maybe you, you I, I, I go, oh, no, maybe that's just a little crazy. And then it just keeps happening and things just start, stop adding up. And then I go full-blown conspiracy. And then I'll only come down a little bit. <laughs> I'm at the full-blown right now where, honestly, I, 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 like, maybe this is how we should wrap up this episode. I'm gonna, uh, we'll each say our piece on what we really sure. think the COVID response is. <laughs> Here's mine. COVID-19. Uh, and this is the one thing that freaked me out the most in the pandemic documentary about how this occurred in less than a decade, how SARS morphed, right? And she right. claimed that should be over 800 years. I, that's, I have to admit, I have not fact-checked any of that, but it sounds to me like I, don't, I remember viruses do take a long time to mutate like this without being manipulated. We know that that's possible. But even with SARS, that's why everything stopped is because it had morphed itself into uh, a form that humans couldn't catch Mm -hmm. Okay. in less than, what was it, a year and a half? Yeah. So I think at best there was manipulation with this virus. I do think that if you have an autoimmune issue or you're uh, of older age, that you should be taking more necessary precautions. Um, but I don't think we need to be as shut in as we have been. I am for opening up the world again, and there is going to be a spike in cases. It's just naturally going to happen, but it's also, I know, I don't believe that the numbers that are being reported are accurate. They're largely inflated, but that doesn't mean we need to be careless with this. We still need to be careful, but there is a greater plan to this. Whether it was totally... Uh, perpetrated, which I don't think is 100% true. I think this is just another one of those kind of 9-11 type things where take advantage of a situation for pro- corporate gain. And that's my opinion on this. Everybody stay safe. Uh, think of the people you love the most. But uh, <laughs> this is getting <laughs> I have no idea what my dog is doing. I thought she was just giving you <laughs> a kiss. She's never done this. She's never done this before. It's because she's uh, always on the table. Hi, Cinnamon. Everybody, meet Cinnamon. Cinnamon, the dog who needs a haircut. <laughs> Just like every other human being. All right, what's your Not COVID? Me. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Uh, all right. So uh, I want to mention uh, a doctor by the name of Rashid Buttar. He has a YouTube video, uh, the, the YouTube channel is called uh, Next, Next News Network. And of course, everyone shits on him. Fake news, fake news. This doctor doesn't know what he's talking about. When you, I kind of used this as an example earlier in our podcast, but when you search his name under Wikipedia, Wikipedia shits on him. But then you look at reviews on this doctor they're like four out of five, five out of five, three and a half out of five. He's not that terrible of a human being. And what he, he, he there's a 30 minute, well, I had told you to watch it, but there's a, about a 30 minute YouTube video that he talks about how there's quite a few more layers to this than we 
understand, I guess. And I don't know if I believe it all. He kind of gets into some stuff that I don't believe. But what the part of it I did believe is that he said talking to uh, colleagues, other physicians, they don't understand the COVID-19. It's a real thing. People are dying from it. How many? They truly don't know. Uh, a good example of that is, is you would have to look at the numbers of deaths in New York on a daily basis, say, from two years ago, and compare it to the numbers of now. Okay. Percentage-wise, they really haven't gone up a whole lot. So is there the argument that they're calling these deaths by – they're now death by, dead by COVID, mm-hmm. but maybe they weren't? Because the numbers – if it was all because of COVID, you'd think that the deaths on a daily would be double or whatever, right? You know, they would have increased by a large amount. So what I'm getting at here is, is that it's a real thing. You know, if, like you said, if you're elderly or if you've got autoimmune diseases, you got to be careful. But his biggest argument of all that is, is a virus doesn't jump six feet. It doesn't jump 13 feet you have to essentially make contact with the droplets in your mouth or, you know, you take a sip of your beer and then I take a sip of your beer by accident. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying is, is that when he was in the military, because he was in the military as a doctor for a while, they could be tracked when they were on a mission, as long as they stayed six feet apart from each of their, uh, soldiers i guess the whoever's with them because when they're within six feet the tracking can't tell how many people's there so if one dies and they're all together they can't tell they don't know or they don't know that they're injured or whatever so his big theory is is that by getting us groomed for six feet apart if there is a vaccine that comes out with tracking inside of it micro whatever they call it uh microchip I can't remember what he called it. We would have to stay six feet apart in order for them to track us. That's fucking creepy. Now, I do not, I do not believe that. But what I'm getting at is that I believe that there's something else going on because for a doctor to say that whether you're six feet apart or a foot apart or 13 feet apart, the virus will not travel. And there's doctors in the U S that don't know what's going on. I went and researched that after. And there's plenty of doctors saying the same thing. They don't understand how this virus works. So we have to be careful, but we have to live a normal life, I think. I really do. Yeah, we need to get back to normal. Sorry, I went went Alex Jones there 100%. Dude, no, I loved it. I was captivated. Now I got to go watch this fucking video and I'm not going to sleep tonight because I'm going to be thinking about (laughs) apocalyptic shit. But yeah, let's open up the world. Um... Like, like you said though, like even with the world back to normal, it like, I, the, you know what, this might just make the world more hygienic, which is probably good. I uh, like even myself, dude, you ever thought about like when you grab like a box of cereal at the grocery store, how some guy could have been scratching his balls and then grab that same box of cereal, put it down. And then you went to the, get a box of cereal. That's the happened to be the one you grabbed and you like had a tickle in your nose. You're pretty much sniffing his balls. Right. But until three months ago, that didn't kill you. I know. And that's another thing. The longer we are all secluded and staying inside, our immune systems get weaker. He talks that, about that that's largely something, too. Yeah. So, yeah. He said that what happens is if, if the U.S. and he, he kind of I, I – I couldn't get a feeling if he was on Trump's side or not, but he kind of did say this is why the U.S. is reopening things – in stages yeah because if everyone was left out all at the same time oh there would be a huge increase in deaths of just the flu yeah because there's lots of people stress uh how do you put it first off you're disinfecting everything so you're killing bacteria that helps with your immune system helps build your immune system stress increases immune system no one's working right now you know there's so many aspects that could cause your immune system to crash and then you let out millions of people all at once what's going to happen there's going to be a whole shit ton of people that get sick yeah so i don't know 
it's it's just yeah just wait to see what how the media is going to spin the next wave no matter what it is everything is used for political gain now and it's you know you know and that's that's one side of that i truly believe is we did flatten the curve by doing this and going back to those frontline frontline workers i can't imagine what hell they would have been going through if we wouldn't have done this Exactly. That's true. And, and you're right. So, so anyone listening to this point, I'm not totally crazy. Like I do believe that that, that was a positive thing to do, but now because they've seen the numbers and they're starting to drop, I think we have to get back to normal life or else we're going to have all sorts of different deaths from suicide to, uh, flus. Uh, even I, I I talk about this because I have allergies. I can tell when my immune system's weaker because my allergies bother me more. Yeah. You know, what happens if all of a sudden, you know, there's a spike in allergy deaths? I don't know. I'm just saying that there's a lot of other things that could be affected by this. Yeah, so. exactly. So, yeah. So, yeah. Sum up, you guys. Uh, I think that the world's ready to go back to to, to normal. Uh I, I, I think that just, yeah, this has been a nice, yeah. sincere episode. Uh, actually pretty fun. Is it funny how we start talking about degrading women and we end on <laughs> such a positive note, supporting our frontline workers. <laughs> the ups so and everyone, downs. That is, everyone that's listening, if there is anyone listening, just remember, form your own opinion and stand by it. If someone says you're a piece of shit because you don't have the same opinion as them, Fuck them. Uh, but if someone does say, hey, you know what? I found this doing some research. Do your research and form an argument. Yeah. That's you- the problem with social media is if you don't answer someone's comment right away, they call you a piece of shit because you're not responding when you may actually be doing research for what they claim. Yeah. Now, do your research. Yeah, do your research. You know, you and, know, for and- your opinion. A good point to just uh, piggyback on that is um, the thing about social media has done is allowed people that don't have a spine to argue. Put it this way. Don't, yeah. you don't exactly. need to be a dick. You don't need to agree on everything. There are people that I disagree with on so many things, but if we are in person, like, do you think that say, oh, like you need to have your own backbone say this, like you should not, have a computer screen to be in between you guys to say terrible things you need to be face to face don't say anything you wouldn't say to anybody face to face on social media and then this is not an issue you can have a nice simple intelligent articulated uh conversation and you might actually learn something if you're not sitting there stuck in your ways it's okay to have an opinion and other people are allowed to have their own opinion too doesn't mean you have to hate the person hate the player not the game I don't know. Hate the game, not the player in this case. Okay. No, I got a P2. I got a P2, Brad. He just texted me. Keep talking. I have to pee. All right. We can wrap this up. Uh, Thank you guys so much for listening. Go and check us out. We're on YouTube, obviously. Uh, If you're just listening to the podcast version, go check us out on YouTube. You can see our facial reactions. And you know, that probably gives some more credence to how we actually come across. You know, I'm laughing when I'm saying horrible things because I'm obviously joking. Um, Brad, you get to see some puppy play if you guys not like that. Uh, you get to see a cute little puppy dog if you check us out on YouTube. So go and check it out, the Chuck and Ducks podcast. Go and subscribe, and uh, we're gonna keep chiming these out. So thank you guys for listening. Okay, bye.